Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Timbertown. And we're heading over to the solar kiln because we have got all of the hickory wood that we planed for you getting ready to make tongue and groove. Your homemade hickory tongue and groove. And I just wanted to show you, I mean, this is a stack that we cut. And honestly, this is the tree that we used in actually one of our best videos uh, as a demonstration. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description uh, so you can check out that video and what that log was. But we cut that thing four months ago. It's been dried. This stack was uh, 820 board square feet and we ended up with 650 after we planed, cut, sized all of our boards. But these would look at the actual difference in the wood. It is beautiful. Beautiful stuff. So this stack is already sized, planed, ready to be tongue and grooved. Jason and I are gonna head back because we've got one more stack of actually awesome, different hickory that we're gonna use into this flooring. So come on down to the shop and we'll show you what we got. I can't wait for people to see the install of this one, Dan. It is. Look at that. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, gang, if you really, really, really want to make your own hardwood flooring or hardwood products, everything really starts here. You know, if you're using your own trees, you're milling your own lumber, you actually have to do, uh, there's definitely a procedure into getting your wood dry because it's imperative that this wood is dry when you're gonna do it for interior projects. But if you can kind of see, Jay and I have stacks of wood processing all over the place, stacks in the kiln getting ready. And uh, really, this is the stack. Uh, we showed you delivering this to the kiln. And guys, this is why we picked this particular wood. One, because all the trees were cut on the lot of the carriage house when we did the uh, main pad. So these logs have been around for a couple of years and they actually got post beetle. And this is why we picked this actual material. And uh, we went through several processes to make sure that everything was perfect. When the wood came out of our kiln, it was actually dry enough to use. I decided to bring it to a vacuum kiln and uh, cook it for four days at 160 degrees. That's gonna verify that absolutely no bugs exist. I think I probably, I don't wanna say wasted my money, but now I know for sure. And if you look at this stuff, it is rustic. This is what Jay and I do. I mean, for 20 years in Arizona, we used to try to fake this with nails <laughs> and chains. This is beautiful stuff. There's no faking this, Dan. No, this is actually the stack, and we're gonna turn this into three different products um, because we know what we need to finish the carriage house. And actually, these pieces that we have here have already been sized and planed these are going to be our cabinet doors. Now when you use wood like that, look at the difference in the variation of all this wood. We don't really care so much about the size or anything. We're going to be gluing panels together and making doors out of them. So the first product project that's going to be there is actually making the cabinet doors. This is how the wood needs to be dried. This wood has been sitting in the stack just like this for four months, been rotated from air dried, solar kiln, and then over to the vacuum kiln. But this is how your rough wood is gonna look. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna need to size every one of these pieces because all of this, this first top stack right here is all gonna be V groove, tongue and groove that we're actually gonna use for portions of the wall. And the actual bottom, the longer pieces here, we're gonna cut in half and we're gonna turn that whole bottom stack into hickory flooring that we're gonna use as an accent inside the carriage house with the other uh, hickory we have in there. So it's gonna blend the cabinets, the floor, and we have pieces of the wall. So everything is gonna blend perfectly together. 
So realistically, guys, there's a couple different ways how we get this product and use everything that we can. And uh, we'll take you into the shop right now and show you how we start processing this stuff. That's a lot of hickory, Dan. And we got a lot more to come. It's the second stack, Jay. <laughs> Tell me about this cherry, though. <laughs> I forgot about the cherry. Yes, I threw a couple. This is the first time we've been working with Tennessee cherry. I've had this cut same exact time. So this, this wood's been cut and milled four, almost five months ago. But we are going to plane a piece of this today just to see what it looks like. Because I got a stack of it over there and I got to figure out what we're going to do with it. I'm but excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. So let's get to cutting some stuff, show these guys how the machines work, and how you and I do things together. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing, Jay. Okay, guys. So we're straightening out our boards right here. And actually, for this process, we're making the kitchen cabinets out of this, so I don't have a specific size. I'm trying to get the most out of my wood since we paid money to have this done. So really, for me, We've already got one side cut. So once you have a straight edge with this machine, I'm able to use my laser, my system, move exactly where I want to cut the board off. Now I'm trying to get the most material. So there you go. You see right here on the end, that's about all I'm going to lose. Hey, you know what? I didn't, I don't think I started the, uh, let me put on the power box, bud. Had to get our three-phase uh, power going, guys. Okay, so you can see, I'm gonna get everything out of this board right here. Out of way. If I just follow my fence line and my cut board into here, look at that. Pull your things back if you're not going in straight. It's usually very simple. The board takes off, stays with the fence. There's my waist piece. Nothing. I've got a perfectly square board. Usually Jason's over here and uh, he's actually explaining and sending the boards back to me. So, really, where he has here, we have a double cut going on. We should be able to just play. And as he's running the planer, I'm sending another board back through. So it's pretty simple for us. Now you see here, we've got a board. Maybe you want to get rid of this knot. You definitely need to get rid of this bar. So we're just going to resize what we want to do. I'm looking at my laser. What do I want? Do I want to cut the knot off and keep the board? I might want to do that in this circumstance. That's it. So at least we're still going to get one premium board out of that. That we would actually just send right back through the planer. Now both of these boards are completely ready to be glued together. These are glued joint ready. Plain, both sides. That portion's done. So really Jay and I have got all our kitchen cabinets finished. And what we're going to be doing now is I'll show you the other way that we have to size these boards. What I'm doing is I'm just setting my fence to give me a gauge where to put the board onto. But you can kind of see here, we've got a really crappy, crappy end. So we're looking to cut all of this off, all of this off to save our, our good board. So really, with our laser system. I can actually see where my board, where my laser is, right here. 
that's where that board's going to get cut. So that's going to be my first straight line that we're running through. Go guys, we've got one perfect straight edge. So now that we're doing hardwood flooring, what we would do is we would do the whole stack, get our edges straight, but it's still going to need to be sized. So when we're making hardwood flooring, we're making six inch pieces, five, four, three, and two and a half. So I have a multitude of uh, numbers that I can use. But here, I know sitting here with my laser, I'm getting past that right there. I'm using it square off my fence. Now I need to see where I'm at. I know I'm only going to get a four inch piece out of that, so I put it to four. We're going to come through. It's going to cut it perfectly straight. That's going to be a piece of four inch flooring. So now at that point, you know, Jay would take the piece, send it right back to me through the planer. So there we go. This is a blank piece that is now ready to be tongue and groove. So what we need to do is to turn every one of these pieces in that stack into either a six, five, four, three, or two and a half. And that's gonna be the blanks that we use to actually turn this into your finished flooring. So that's how we use it to straighten it out. Um, you know, the key to this thing is getting the first straight line. And I don't need, and I don't use the fence. We're basically gliding it through. So with a table saw, you're gonna have to make yourself some sort of jig to get through because you can't really run a bent board on a fence and get a straight board. So for us, it, it, uh, this moves a lot faster for us. And uh, this is really the product that we do most of. So this is why we use that machine instead of a table saw. And you can see, every board will be exactly, I mean, it's a glued joint ready. No planing, no anything. So, that's how we get it done. We're going to turn all this stuff into the same material. Then we're going to get it back on the machine, change the blades, and uh, start cutting some tongue and groove out of it. So this, at this point, can either be V-groove, straight groove, or anything you want. But uh, that's our sizes. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> it's really cool looking. It is. And we actually thought we'd show you uh, the inside of the machine of what we got going on here. And then when we're doing all of our planing work, and if we're making V-groove, we're using our helical head planer. And that's what's on here right now. But we need to switch the machine over because we're going to be making hickory hardwood flooring. So let me just show you a couple of things that we have to do. These are the bits for the actual uh, V groove. So you can actually see it has a square uh, tongue going into a square groove. 
Uh, and there's the cut for the 45. And they're upside down because one of my machines is upside down. One of mine's in the other direction so that it's cutting right. So you do need to buy these. If you use this Woodmaster, you're going to need to get the bit through them because these are custom made for this machine to run like that. Now we're actually making the hardwood flooring. So we're going to need to take our helical head off. We're going to need to put our molder on. And we're going to run this stuff upside down. And in our molder, we are actually going to install, this is going to make our relief cuts. Now I have a series of them here of the kit so that we can use them between three and seven inches. But you'll see uh, of the grooves that we want to put in the back. And that's going to keep the wood from cupping. I know they have a couple of other uh, areas about ventilation and things like that. But realistically, I know it's, it helps with the cupping. So now we need to change our router bits. And this is the Woodmaster flooring bit. And what you can see is the difference is when you're installing the hardwood floor, these are round tabs. Going to make it a lot easier when you're doing your install. And the biggest thing right here, I'm going to point to it, this little point. This is actually going to be cutting a groove where our nail is going to. So it's actually going to give room in the hardwood to embed that nail, have no issues with it sticking out and getting your next can, piece in. Can you stretch that out to me, Dan, so I can get a little closer look at it? Because it's, it's, Tell I, me. that thing is amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, just, there we go. Wow, that's fantastic. Cool. Now, I have, uh, as you can see, these are brand new. Have not used these. These I've had for a while. I don't even know how many board feet I've gone through. I know that we went through uh, probably 1,500 board feet this week alone. So these bits last a long, long time. So we're going to re-gauge, get our molder put into place. I'm going to get my bits put on my router. We're going to get gauged up, and then we'll show you actually how uh, it looks before we cover up. And then we'll um, run some pieces, and you'll see how that goes. Well, I'm excited. I am excited. Hickory's hard, my friends. I love this helical thing, too. This thing is amazing. Okay, uh, we've actually got the helical head off, and now we have our molder head here. It's where you can set all of your blades, which right now you can see this is the cutting blade that we're using that's cutting the channel in the back of the wood. We have it set up for the small two and a quarters because uh, we're finishing up this project. But you can see I have my marks on here. This is where my boards were running. So if I had a six inch board, I would just add another one. Add the little spacer here. There comes in a three piece kit. So you actually, there you go again, multifunctional. Used it for the entire floor package. But that's really how it works in the other sides of your molder because this is a three stage molder. Also, you have to put in your weights. Weights. Boom. And that's it. So as we're running, uh, we're not planing. We are using our molder to get the bottom finished. Top's already done since we planed it. So there you go, guys. That's how easy it is to change and set up. Now, there's several other setups for this machine we'll get in later. But that's how you do it for doing your hickory hardwood flooring. Any hardwood flooring. Any flooring. I keep saying hardwood because that's all we got. That thing's heavy, too. It is heavy, Jay. <laughs> it's heavy. So, again, yeah, let's go. When I'm using my molder head or changing out the uh, helical head, uh, yeah, I want to do all my product, you know, projects at once. So I'm using the helical head. That's why we did the kitchen. We did the uh, tongue and groove V-groove. Then we did this flooring so we didn't have to change the plane or put out that. Boom. Now, at the end of the job, we got our molder here. The next thing I'm thinking is, what else can we use this molder for while I got it set up? But we've pounded through. I haven't even counted, guys, but well over 3,000 square feet of this stuff. Blades are still brand new. Awesome. Brand new. Barely even working. We barely even made any dust with it. So that's it, guys. Simple and easy. One step.
boards were all four side planes. There's our hickory boards. So now, with this, you're looking to put the uh, bed side, if you have any, up. Because we're going to be putting in the back room. And cutting the Team G. Now we're running through this pretty slow. Uh, because it's hickory. It's a dry. It's hard. This one pass through. So you see, it doesn't go through fast. But you're gonna punch through board feet very quickly. Okay. All right. So you see, if you're making actually uh, tongue and groove flooring, you need these grooves in the back. These boards are wide for flooring, so you don't want them to cup. By doing this, it's going to keep your board flat. It's going to be easy to install. You also look the rounded edges here. So when you're actually installing, it's going to make it easier than a square edge. And on the hickory flooring or your hardwood, there is the nailing groove. So when you're actually coming through with your toenailer, your nails are going to get recessed in there. I mean, it's, this is the first time I've actually used this particular bit. It is beautiful. But I mean, guys, we're not on the uh, floor yet. There you go. Look how beautiful that <laughs> is. I didn't even hit it yet. I mean, we're going to get that sucked in so tight. That's what the flooring is going to look like. We decided to leave it natural because look at it. I mean, the variation, it is beautiful. We'll run you a couple pieces with our uh, post beetle wood too because we're going to accent this with this. Guys, rustic, homemade tongue and groove, my friends. I'm excited to install it. Unfortunately, we're going to have to put it in the carriage house for a couple of weeks to acclimate and then Jay and I are going to definitely get after it. Hopefully everybody enjoyed what we had to show you today, maybe learn some or at least see how uh, we process wood. But uh, I know this was about hickory hardwood flooring, which Jay and I made 15, a little over 1500 square feet of this material, but we also cut cedar v groove we actually already cut it and hung it into the carriage house we'll show you also with our poplar already hung in the carriage house and again my favorite the kitchen cabinet doors which we are right now in the process of finishing making putting the edges on hanging them in the kitchen so i hopefully you guys join us for all of that and uh, we really appreciate you watching and please if you have any comments any suggestions, anything that can make this experience better, uh, we'd appreciate it. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a great day.